my age, he's glad to be anywhere. <laughs> anyway, I found out that it's best to have the audience ask questions because I can answer what you want to know and not me just to ramble on about something you don't care about. <laughs> so anyway, whoever has a question, just yell them out. Hey, listen, I'm hard of hearing too. Yeah. This, this is not so much a question, it's not so much about the movie, but I go down to Clearwater, uh, Clearwater Beach in uh, Florida. Uh, I've been going down there every winter for a long time. And there's a restaurant there, a famous restaurant called Frenchies that has a framed autographed photo, and I'm pretty sure it's of you. Would that be right? Have it could be. I'm not <laughs> sure either. It's a guy in the soup, you know. So I think yeah. it has, all these years I've been going on there and I walk into Frenchies and I say, look, there's the creature. And that's the guy that was the creature. So, I'm too old to remember that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that wasn't that shot in Wakula Springs? The underwater sequences for the first creature movie was shot at Wakula Springs. And a little bit of the movie was shot at uh, Silver Springs near Ocala, Florida. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, with the legacy of the Universal Monsters, when you were filming, did you feel like you were becoming a part of that? Or was it like maybe just another job for you? No, at that time it was a job. <laughs> and I was earning $600 a week. And that was a lot of money then. <laughs> and I went home and I didn't think about the creature from the Blue Light Lagoon. <coughs> well, by the way, I had to pay to go see the movie. <laughs> but I didn't think about the creature from the Black Lagoon until about 20 years afterwards. I got a little letter from somebody that wanted a picture. Well, I didn't have any pictures. But then I acquired one picture. I still have the picture at the table. That's the only picture I had that I started signing in. And gradually, I built up my creature assortment to about 200 pictures. We had more than we could bring here to show because we just have a whole bunch. Out of all three movies, which one is your favorite? The first one. First one. Yeah. They gradually, on each movie, they spent less and less money. <laughs> And if they do a, a remake of the movie, would you like to do a cameo in it? Would you be yeah, in the bathtub. <laughs> <laughs> Who else? The suit is still so impeccable today. What was it like getting into that and working underwater inside of it? Well, the suit was made of sponge rubber and latex and they made it at the Universal Makeup Department. And I wore a leotard, and they were gonna glue the pieces on the leotard, which would be a chest plate, thigh pads, and so forth. Well, they put the first piece with a chest plate that they glued to my chest. And Jack Kevan, the makeup artist, said, we'll let that dry, and then we'll do the rest of the pieces on your body. And I said, Jack, this, this is getting hot. <laughs> the glue setting up got hot. And so he kept working. He says, it'll be all right. I said, it's getting hot. <laughs> and pretty soon I said, Jack, you got to take this suit off of me. So they did. And I had a big burn right in the middle of my chest. And I still have the scar from that burn. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> Much of a swimmer beforehand, or did it make you scared of the water? <laughs> I think you know. Were you, were you much of a swimmer beforehand? Were you a swimmer before? Oh, was I a swimmer? Of course. <laughs> no, I was a very good swimmer, and how I got the job, a friend of mine ran a hotel at Wakala Springs. And he called me, he said, Rico, I'm going out of town. Could you do a favor for me? I said, sure. He says, I have some people from California coming to look at the springs as a location. Would you show them around? I said, certainly. 
So I picked him up and took him to Wakala Springs. And the cameraman was shooting test footage of showing the size of fish and, and eels and grass and alligators and whatever. And he said, can I get you to swim in front of the camera just to show the difference between the size of a human being and all these other animals? I said, sure. So I took him and swam and took them back to the airport. They went back to California. And pretty soon, about a week later, the manager of the hotel said, Rico, they're trying to get a hold of you. Uh, can I give them your home phone number? I said, certainly. So I got a call from Jack uh, Arnold, who happened to be the director of the film. He said, hey, we like the way you swim. How would you like to be a monster? Said, you got it. So I went to California, and they spent, I was out there about a month and a half. They spent most of that time trying to make a, a correct creature. Well, the first one they made, he looked more like an eel than a creature. And I swam in it, and they had test footage of me swimming in the suit and Judy Adams in a white bathing suit. Well, everybody loved her in a white bathing suit. <laughs> but the creature looked more like an eel. So they had to start from scratch again to build a suit. We went back into the makeup lab, and they spent about a month, month and a half building the suit that we actually used in the film. Um, back in the old Evan Costello TV show, when the creature made a cameo, who played him? That wasn't me. <laughs> no, it was some actor of, I don't know who it was. Oh, okay. Was it very claustrophobic being in a suit like that and being like underwater and dealing with like fire and everything, knowing that like that was just off camera when you're like knocking over the lanterns and everything? As I said, I'm getting deaf. Hold on. <laughs> um, did you feel claustrophobic under the water, in the suit, under the water? And oh, no, I felt fairly comfortable. When I first, uh, the best way to put it is when you're in school and you're going to play football. You put on all the pads and everything the first time, and it's kind of awkward and clumsy, but when you get in the game, you don't even know you have them on. Mm -hmm. It was the same with that suit. Once I got in it and started swimming in it, I forgot I was in a suit even. I was wondering, if, did you have plans to be in the movies, or it sounds like it was kind of a, a, an accident, like you were taking people on a tour, and then they said, hey, you want to be the creature? And then your career took off from there. Is that how it worked? Did you have plans of being in movies? Did you plan on being in movies? Or did it, being in movies in general? Oh, yeah. No, there was a thing, during, during the time when I was growing up as a kid, there's a thing called Grantland Rice Sports Film. I don't know whether anybody remembers that or not. And we did all kind of crazy things for the uh, sports films, because in the theaters they'd show a movie, and at the end of the movie they'd show some short subject which was funny or different. And we made a bunch of <coughs> different things underwater for them to show in the theaters after the movie read. Do you have any memories of Millicent Patrick, one of the uh, makeup designers? Uh, Millicent Patrick, do you have any memories of her? Yeah, Millicent, one time I saw her. We were shooting, testing the suit, and we went down the back lot of Universal Studios, and they have a tank which you would dive in and test the suits. And I was on the top side of the tank, and I felt this person working on my chest. I looked down, and it was her. And I said, what are you doing? She says, I'm making it better. <laughs> anyway, that was the first time I saw her and the last time I saw her. I give the credit to the makeup artist, Jack Kevan, and an 
an artist from Universal, uh, from uh, Disney World called Chris Mueller. And I give credit to both of them for building the right suit. How long would it take each day for you for them to put you into the suit? Getting in the suit was fairly easy. I would put my legs in and my arms in, and they would zip up the back and snap it closed, put the hands on separate, the feet on separate, and the head on separate. And I'd say it takes about five minutes to get in the suit, maybe five minutes to get out of the suit. Thank you. Have you had a chance to see The Shape of Water? And if so, do you have any thoughts on it? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I did. And uh, I was in touch with the director. He called me and said he tried to make Universal make a new creature movie, but they wouldn't do it, so he made his own creature movie. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the film, and I love the direction, but I thought the Indians sucked. <laughs> I told him so too. <laughs> but he was a nice man. And, uh, his, his assistant, who was also, I believe, his secretary, I'm still in touch with her, and uh, she said, she, do I have any other projects? And I have a bunch of them. So I sent her some, and she's going to see if she can get the money to raise it to make the film. Are you holding your breath the whole time, or did you have access to scuba tanks underwater? No, the, what, the way I did the scenes, I had four safety people, one on each side of me, and I had an air hose that I breathed from. And the people said, well, how do you breathe from an air hose? Well, it's similar to if you're in the backyard and you got a hose running and you want to drink some water out of it, you put it up to your mouth and you drink the water that you want, the rest just spills out. But it works the same way with air. Put the air hose in your mouth and you breathe in, and what you don't breathe, it just spills out. But a funny thing is, the mouth sat about this far from my mouth. And when I put the air in and I'd exhale, bubbles would go up inside the head. And what happened was you get a stream of bubbles coming out of the top of your head. <laughs> well, we had a signal with the cameraman that said whenever I was ready to go into the scene, before I went in, I would take my hand and press on the head as hard as I could to get rid of the bubbles. But I'm sure if you saw the film, you could still see a little stream of bubbles coming out of the head. <laughs> I had four safety people and I would breathe from the air hose and swim into the scene holding my breath as best I could to create the scene or, or accomplish what I was trying to do. And I had a signal to the safety people that if I went totally limp, that meant I needed air. Because <laughs> so, usually I was always doing something, my hand or my head. But it worked out perfect, and we didn't have any accidents. Tell them how you got warmed up. Huh? Tell them how you got warmed up with the breathing. Oh, we shot in the winter time, and the water temperature was 71 degrees, and at that time the air temperature at Tallahassee was 49 degrees, so it was pretty chilly. So I would go in the water and come out and. I'd be in the cold air, the water was cold, and I was cold. So the crew felt sorry for me. And one of the guys would come up and say, how would you like a shot of brandy? I said, yeah, I'd like it. <laughs> and other crew members, not knowing that the other crew member gave me some brandy, <laughs> after about five or six shots of brandy, they had a drunk creature. <laughs> so they had to cut that out. <laughs> Along with the other actors, Richard Denning, Whit Bissell, uh, 
did, were they, did you interact with them and were they fun to be around? Well, no. Uh, the, the outer water sequence was filming in Silver Springs and the Valcola Springs. At the same time, they were filming the topside sequence in California on the back lot. And the only time that I met them or talked to them is before I left to come to Florida to do the underwater scenes, they had the first day of shooting. And I was there when they did it. And I met uh, Richard Carlson and Richard Denning. And uh, I had met Julie before. And by the way, we went to uh, Catalina with Julie. And we taught her how to swim and how to dive. And she wanted to do the work, but she couldn't because we were shooting the underwater at the same time we were shooting the topside sequences in California. When I was a kid and I would watch TV and I'd see your name in the credits for Flipper, I would go back to my horror movie books and go, that's the same guy. What was it like going from being the creature to, to directing? Uh, I did more directing than I did the creature. Mm -hmm. uh, I directed things like Thunderball, the underwater sequences, Never Say Never Again, Around the World Out of the Sea, and Caddyshack, many other films. <laughs> but I, uh, but I was what? Flipper. Tell them about Flipper. Oh, Flipper. Uh, I was working somewhere, and I can't remember where, and I came home, and my children were watching Lassie. And for some reason, I remembered that when I was in school, high school, that I read somewhere about a Greek guy riding a dolphin. And I sat down while they were watching Lassie, and I said, well, why not have a show about a dolphin and a boy instead of Lassie? And so my brother-in-law was a radio announcer, and he was also a pretty good writer, and I wasn't. So we got the idea of writing a book about a boy and a dolphin. So we spent a whole week uh, at a, a, near a shack on a, a little cottage near the water, and we wrote the book, Flipper. And we sent it to New York. I went to New York with the book, took, to a, took it to about four or five book places. And I found one of them that seemed interested in making it into a book. I went back home and I never heard from him. Well, I'd already worked with Ivan Tors on the movies, a TV series called Sea Hunt. And I got the bright idea, I called Ivan, I said, Ivan, will you do me a favor? I said, would you say you're considering my book as a movie? <laughs> and I'll call the book company and tell them that I've got a producer in Hollywood that is interested in making it into a movie to get them more interested in making a book. <laughs> but I never heard back from them. So I called Ivan. And I said, I can't get this book up. He says, wait a minute. He said, my wife read the book. She made me read the book. Let's make a movie. So he then got the money from MGM, and we made the first uh, Flipper movie. We trained the animals. Wow. Uh, an interesting thing, we couldn't find a dolphin to play the part of Flipper. We went to all the aquariums in Florida and some outside of Florida and asked the people if we could get a dolphin to play flipper. They didn't want any part of us. They said no. And at that time, no one ever swam with a dolphin. What they did, they had people, uh, dolphins jumping out of the water and people feeding them fish, jumping through hoops and doing all kind of crazy stuff. But we went down to the Florida Keys, and there was a guy named Milton Santini, and his job was capturing dolphins for aquariums. And he, we said, could you get us a dolphin for uh, us to use as a show called Flipper? He says, no, but I'll tell you something. He says, next door in my little pool, I've got a dolphin that I have in there, 
that I feed by hand. And the reason I have her is when wild dolphins come in and they get in the water with her, she eats and they see her eating, so they start feeding sooner. He says, go take a look at her. So Ivan and I went over to where the dolphin was. There was a dock sitting out. And Ivan walked out on the dock. I got in the water, waited about waist deep. And in about one minute, this dolphin swam around me and stuck her nose right up under my arm. I said, Ivan, we got flipper. <laughs> so I spent the next three months training her to work and do the things that we needed in the film. But I'd never trained a dolphin before, so I had to learn as the dolphin had to learn. I had my son, Ricky, he was uh, about nine then, I guess, and I was using him to help me with Flipper, because the show was going to be about a man and a boy. And I was training the dolphin. I threw some balls in the water. She'd take it in her mouth, bring it back to me. Throw a towel in, she'd bring it back to me. And my son was wearing cut-off jeans. And I got the bright idea, if she retrieves these things, maybe she'll retrieve the boy. <laughs> so I say, Ricky, when I throw the ball, I'm going to throw it way off over out of the way so it won't hit the water. But when it does, you jump in the water and see if she can come get you. So sure enough, I threw the ball, he jumped in the water, and she, the dolphin tried to bring him back to me by pulling him with one of the eyelets in his cut off jeans. <laughs> Well, accidentally, he stuck his arm up, and her fin went right into it, and she told him to me. So I thought, wowee. <laughs> I said, Ricky, this time, I want you to go across the pond, which was about the distance of this room. I said, I want you to go across the pond, and I'm going to throw the ball over your head. You jump in the water, and when she comes over there, you hold on. So he did. Sure enough, she drove him right to me. And I called Ivan and I said, we got Flipper. <laughs> and I spent the next month and a half or so training the dolphin and the boy together, as well as myself, because we'd never, none of us had ever worked with each other. But it worked out fine. We got him trained, and we used her as a Flipper. Thank you so much for being here. If you'd like to uh, meet Rico, get anything signed, or get a picture taken with him, um, there will be some time after the film. So stick around. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you like the film. <laughs>